Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge, a nonprofit organization, sits on 450 acres in the Arkansas Ozarks, seven miles south of the tourist mecca Eureka Springs. It began in 1992 when Hilda Jackson and her family began rescuing animals. They purchased the land that the refuge occupies with the purpose of providing a home for large, unwanted animals. Uh, we usually get calls from all over the country. People decide that they can't take care of an animal or maybe the person had passed on or the divorce, just whatever you know, life might bring you and then suddenly the animal's homeless. So either the authorities will give us a call or the heirs of the people that passed on or even the people themselves. Maybe the laws changed in their area and if it wasn't for the refuge, most of these animals would be destroyed. Some were abused, neglected, starved or kept under miserable conditions. Almost all, clearly, had worn out their welcome at their former homes. But not here. At Turpentine Creek, all the animals, no matter what their history, are treated with respect and affection and a healthy dose of common sense. They are well fed and cared for. A USDA licensed facility for large carnivores Turpentine Creek protects all the rescued animals in its care, but specializes in endangered big cats, specifically lions, tigers, leopards, and cougars. Turpentine Creek Refuge supports public education and awareness and encourages responsible treatment of animals. To support this effort, Turpentine Creek encourages visitors to the refuge, open to the public from 9 a.m. till dusk every day, except Christmas. A valued staff of interns and volunteers give these creatures the care, attention, and respect that they all deserve. Unfortunately, the well-being of these beautiful creatures was not always the prime motivation of their past owners. Every animal at Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge has a story. Um, India Nicole is the tiger, Bengal tiger's name that was released in the National Forest and we were told, I got a call at 9 o'clock in the morning saying that um, this guy was going to bring this tiger out to the refuge and we really didn't have a choice but to take it because he drove up about an hour and a half later in his Toyota pickup, pickup truck with a tiger loaded in the back of the truck. Then after we got talking to him we realized that we had to bring the tiger in because um, we found out that he had released the cat in the National Forest. And two days later, two and a half days later, he ended up back on the gentleman's doorstep, which was over 60 miles away. And the cat would have had to actually travel around or near Harrison, Arkansas, which is, uh, you know, pretty high population of people too. But it was amazing that nobody ever spotted that cat. One of the reasons for Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge's existence is the folly of people trying to keep inappropriate pets. Without the refuge's humanitarian effort, many of the animals here would have been destroyed when their owners tired of them, couldn't take care of them, or found them to be a high-risk pet. There was 56 cats total there, and we ended up taking 21 of those cats. Uh, we decided to take as many as we could because we didn't want to see the animals destroyed, and at that point that was all the only option that we saw was that the animals, if we didn't take them, they were going to be put to sleep. It's hard to describe the difficulty of rescuing that many cats at one time because until you actually are able to see it and be there and smell it, then it's unbelievable because, um, you know, whenever you have 56 cats suddenly needing a home, then it's really sad, you know. and you feel hopeless because there's so many animals that need your help and if you're not able to save them you know that they're going to die so um, when I walked into to equipment and saw those cats the cages weren't kept and the animals were in bad health and we picked up tigers with broken legs and um, that had never been tended to so it was just sad for us and then now that we received the animals, you know, it took six or eight months to ever get the smell out of the animal. I mean, even though their area was clean, but they reeked of this really bad smell. After the animals arrived back at Turpentine Creek, 
and um, it was just non-stop work for us because whenever we were called to do the rescue, there was not even any cages built here. So we had to bring them in and put them in temporary areas and make sure they were healthy. And if they, none of them were healthy. Every one of the animals ended up having to go on a string of antibiotics and having physicals done and different things like that. But, but now they're all healthy and look fabulous, you know. Habitat building looms large among the needs and plans of the refuge. The importance of these habitats for each species cannot be overemphasized. Ideally, all of the creatures at Turpentine Creek would have their own habitat area. And this is the plan. Besides offering prime environments to the animals, the habitats can provide rich data for research on big cats. The changes we've made have been unbelievable in the last five years because, you know, uh, five years ago, building habitats was just a dream. And now it's a reality. We've got 16 big habitats built at this point and 53 big cats living out in those habitats. And that's almost half of the population of the animals that we care for every day. So we're real proud of our efforts here and we, you know, look forward to putting every animal that we have here in one of these big enclosures. In addition to a two-sweet bed and breakfast, a new treehouse has been completed for guests who enjoy getting up close and personal with the big cats. There's nothing quite like waking up to the roar of a lion or looking out your window at breakfast to see a tiger staring back. Also, Guided photo sessions with Turpentine Creek cats are available for a fee. All of these programs and fundraising efforts go toward the animal's upkeep and improvement of the refuge facilities. My biggest message to people is really think before you buy any pet because uh, big cats aren't good pets and um, you know, you don't really know what you're getting into. And if you want to see, come to the refuge and get involved in some of our programs here because um, we need everything from volunteers to clean cages and do things like that or just to um, go out into your own land and spread the word about the refuge. So that's really what we're looking for is just a little help.